You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Tuesday, February 13th. A shocking incident unfolded at the Lakewood Church in Houston led by Pastor Joel Osteen when a woman initiated a shooting within the premises this past Sunday afternoon. The woman, believed to be between 30 and 35 years old, was killed at the scene by law enforcement. Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo has called for an investigation into whether the horrifying act could be categorized as a hate crime. The shooter, armed with a rifle, was reportedly accompanied by a five-year-old child and shot dead by two off-duty police officers. One bystander was injured and the child critically wounded. Uncertainty surrounds who shot the child. Authorities, including the FBI, local police, and Texas Rangers, are on the hunt for clues to determine the offender's motive. The horrifying event has elicited a wave of prayers and messages of comfort from pastors nationwide. Notably, both David Jeremiah of Shadow Mountain Community Church and Benny Hinn expressed condolences and urged prayers for the affected families. The tragic incident underscored the urgent need for security in places of worship, as highlighted by Greg Laurie from Harvest Christian Fellowship. UK judges have raised concerns about asylum seekers potentially exploiting religious conversion, specifically to Christianity, to evade deportation. This follows revelations of investigations that questioned whether church leaders sufficiently scrutinized converts' motives before supporting their asylum applications. The Home Office has reportedly questioned religious leaders' depth of investigation into migrants' intent behind converting from Islam to Christianity. Key figures such as Abdul Azadi, linked to a chemical attack and converting to Christianity to avoid risk in Afghanistan, highlight this issue. Judges question whether language barriers may impede religious authorities in vouching for converts' faith. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, defended the church, arguing their role has been misrepresented, while former Archbishop Lord George Carey criticized the church's approach to migration. Reverend Matthew Firth claimed the Church of England has become a conveyor belt of asylum seeker baptisms. Cameroon has taken historical strides in malaria prevention by being the first to roll out the WHO-approved RTS malaria vaccine. This move has been crucial in the fight against malaria, a disease that claimed over 600,000 lives in 2022, with a staggering 95% of these deaths occurring in Africa. Despite initial public skepticism, faith-based institutions, specifically Baptist churches, have played a critical role in combating misinformation and bolstering trust at a community level. Cameroon's bold initiative is providing a roadmap for other African nations such as Liberia, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Sierra Leone, slated to receive over 1.7 million doses in the coming months. Ashley Burkett, head of malaria vaccine development at PATH, emphasized, quote, reducing infections by 30 percent translates into saving thousands of lives. However, the government, alongside partnering entities like the Cameroon Baptist Convention, continues to grapple with spreading vaccine misinformation. On a recent episode of the Christian Post podcast, The Inside Story, reporter Ryan Foley disclosed conversations from the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, highlighting the escalating global religious persecution. Experts' alarming insights ranged from a Catholic priest's appeal to the U.S. to label Nigeria a terrorist government to House Speaker Mike Johnson's fervent insistence for the Biden administration's protection of Uyghur Muslims in China. The 15-minute podcast aims to unravel not just the headlines, but the critical issues beneath them, steering listeners to comprehend the cultural and political political forces, and the significance of each story. You can listen to this episode of the Inside Story podcast by clicking the link in the podcast show notes below. News out of Jasper, Tennessee, describes the indictment of Pastor David Berry of the Praise and Worship Family Outreach Center. He faces counts of computer crimes, theft over $10,000, and financial exploitation of a vulnerable adult. Berry is accused of defrauding a mentally disabled man out of more than $27,000, misappropriating Social Security funds, while also taking control of over $366,000 of the man's pension and Social Security benefits. Despite these allegations, the Tennessee church remains firmly supportive of Berry, stating these are quote, unfounded accusations. Marion County's Treasury Comptroller Jason Mumpower unveiled details of the allegations, painting a picture of rogue payment management and illegal exploitation. Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma, has achieved a record spring semester enrollment, continuing its upward trajectory of the 15th consecutive year. 
with over 5,147 students, marking the first time the institution has surpassed the 5,000 student threshold for spring enrollment. Dr. William M. Wilson, the university's president, highlighted ORU's distinctive value-centric culture and spirit-empowered educational approach as key factors driving its remarkable growth and academic appeal. The university, a leading Pentecostal institution founded in 1963, has attracted a diverse student body from all 50 U.S. states and 151 countries, emphasizing its commitment to preparing students to lead and make a global impact. This growth is particularly noteworthy against a backdrop of challenges in the higher education sector, including declining enrollments and institutional closures, especially among Christian colleges. ORU's success, marked by a 10.5% enrollment increase compared to the previous year, a 93% retention rate, and significant growth in graduate program enrollment, stands out as an exemplar of resilience and attractiveness to students and parents seeking an education grounded in values and aimed at world-changing. In Super Bowl 58, the Kansas City Chiefs, led by quarterback Patrick Mahomes, staged a remarkable comeback to defeat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22, marking their third Super Bowl win in five years and achieving back-to-back championships, a feat last accomplished by the New England Patriots in 2004 and 2005. Mahomes, who secured his third Super Bowl MVP award with a 333-yard, two-touchdown performance, attributed the victory and the season's success to divine challenge and guidance, emphasizing the team's resilience in the face of adversity. The game notable for its overtime drama under the league's new playoff rules, culminated in a decisive three-yard touchdown pass to McCall Hardman. Both Mahomes and Chiefs owner Clark Hunt publicly gave glory to God for their triumph, with Mahomes also acknowledging his faith's role in his life and career. The Chiefs' victory, which owner Hunt and Mahomes hinted at as the beginning of a dynasty, was a testament to the team's enduring spirit and collective effort, underpinned by a deep sense of faith and determination. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post Daily Podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.